This is me. Here I was two years old and I was greeting the world with one of my best smiles. Everybody used to call me sunshine because I was always happy, joyful and smiling. But then one day everything changed. Good morning beautiful people. Today's video will be something uh, different, something special. I will be interviewing Sara. So let's get into it. Okay, Sara, today I will be asking you some uh, questions that I wrote down here. And uh, before we start, uh, I just want to tell you that I'm uh, really, really proud of you. And uh, I'm proud of what you are about to share and uh, how you overcome uh, and reacted uh, to what happened to you. I know and I, I believe uh, how strong you are and uh, you are a survivor. So let's start. Uh, I know it, it is hard for you to share and to tell what happened to you and uh, I know you will be strong and you will be able to do it. So please uh, let's start uh, and uh, let us know what happened uh, and uh, what is your story. I don't know if alone I could do this so thank you so much for being here with me and for asking me some questions so I will be more you know spontaneous and more comfortable. It is always a pleasure. <laughs> I never talk about my struggles with eating disorders it's so uncomfortable to admit to even your closest friends and family. Um, I've been afraid, honestly, to share that I had eating disorders. I was ashamed and I probably was not ready. But today I'm ready and I hope by sharing these I can help someone else. I, I for sure know that eating disorders are something that so many other people are also battling behind closed doors. There is this kind of taboo. Oh my god, eating disorders, uh, can we talk about this, can we not talk about this, it's possible, yes, it's possible. And I'm sure that it's really important to share our story, because we never know who needs to hear that story. Eating disorders affect everyone, and there are serious, serious illnesses. It's not just about, I'm losing weight because I would like to become or look like a model, Anorexia has the highest mortality rate out of any psychiatric illness. I've been suffering from anorexia from the age of 10 to the age of 16, then bulimia from the age of 16 to the age of 19, and then again anorexia and bulimia from the age of 22 to the age of 24. So eating disorders have been a huge part of my life. I always loved to eat, you know, I remember when I was a child, I loved to eat, I was always smiling, happy, I loved to share food and to... Uh, it was kind of a ritual for me, food, food, food. And I've been overweight for almost my entire childhood and I love to dance. I danced for four years and I remember that I started to feel uncomfortable because, you know, I started to compare myself, my body, my figure uh, with, the, with other dancers, with other children that were dancing together with me. I noticed that I wasn't skinny enough, I would like to become different. And I remember somebody at school, they, they started to call me fat, whale, elephant, pig. And they are pretty offensive words for everybody and especially if you are pretty sensitive these words hurt they hurt a lot so when I was 10 I was still a child I decided that I wanted to lose weight so I started a diet the diet worked really well I lost 20 kilos in less than two months and I remember that nobody can recognize me anymore. I was so different. I, some people thought that I was, you know, sick or something happened to me. 
this was the beginning, starting with a diet. Okay, so you start losing weight uh, mm -hmm. and uh, then something else happened. Do you remember that period of your life? Can uh, you share it with us? Yeah, I, I do remember that period of uh, my life, but I also have this kind of blackout. I remember some episodes of that period. I probably tried to erase that moment of my life. The line between I want to lose weight and I want to lose weight and I cannot stop anymore is really thin. Eating disorders are not just about food and weight and calories. Eating disorders are an addiction. There is a voice inside you telling that you are not good enough, that you are not skinny enough, and you want to be in control, you want to feel good, you want... Um, you give yourself a lot of rules. For example, I started with no sugar, no junk food, no fried food, no snacks in between meals, and you add day by day new rules. So I don't know if something specifically happened, but I know that the plan, my plan worked, and then I started to lose control completely. The rules that gave me safety were slowly killing me because you know I wanted always more I or less in this case I started to be really really skinny I started to be really out of control and the problem was that I watch in the mirror I watch myself in the mirror but I couldn't see I kept seeing myself overweight even if I was dangerously underweight and uh while you were facing all of this, uh, did your family know about this? Oh yes, of course. Of course they, they knew. This is also another battle. You know, you have your own battle and then you have the battle with the people that, are, that love you, that they care about you. And my family knew. You can see that I was different. I became sneaky. I started to lie about everything, especially food. You know, every time was an occasion where I can, I can just escape food or the moment, the ritual uh, to have a meal together. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, I said, you know, I, I'm not hungry. I remember that I study a little book like this with all the calories and it became my Bible. I knew that I wasn't thinking straight. I knew that everything was so bad for me, but I couldn't eat. I, I was stuck. And I remember my father shouting, my mom crying, my friends, some, some of them, they didn't notice or they never asked me anything. Um, some, my brother, he doesn't understand why I was doing this. They tried to help, because of course, if you see someone that is struggling, suffering, they try to help, but you try to avoid them. And that killed me. It was devastating to see their reactions because you feel so guilty, you feel useless, and they feel useless. So this is something that it's really hard to, to live with. You know, with the idea that you are not just hurting yourself because you think that you are doing great actually, but you are hurting also somebody else and you don't want this. But in that moment you are kind of selfish. It's just everything is, is focused on you and on avoiding food every day for years, for years, for years. When was the moment uh, when you decided to say enough, basta, I need to, to change uh, all of this, I need mm -hmm. to change this situation, uh, I have to do something? I always love life and I always knew that life is a precious gift. I was very shy and very insecure. I did enjoy the company of other people but mostly of the time I was alone. And I spent a lot of time alone because in my head I knew that I couldn't be, I couldn't have the body I would like to have because I cannot see myself in the mirror. So for me, I always look at myself in the mirror and I always remember that chubby little girl. You know, even if my body was changing, for me, uh, 
I have a distortion, it's called also dysmorphia. You see your body, you cannot see your body actually. So I focus all my energy in becoming a better person, in becoming smarter, I study a lot. And since I couldn't be enough externally, I thought that I could be at least try to be a good person. And answering to your question, if there was a, an episode that you know, change everything. There were two episodes. I was brushing my hair one morning and an entire lock of my hair just remains in, in, my, in, my, in my hands. And that scared me to death. I said, what is happening to me? Like, it, it, it's really so bad. If I start losing my hair, something is, is wrong. My period, I didn't have my period for over five years. So you, you knew, because I was smart enough to understand that something was not going in the right direction. And the second episode, probably just a few days after I was starting to lose my hair, um, uh, I, had a I, had, I had a test at school, a Greek test. I need to translate uh, from ancient Greek to Italian, so a translation. I could barely walk. That day I was so um, weak I was so without energy I was looking at these translations and I cannot understand anything my brain is was not working and that scared me uh, the second time and was I wasn't expecting that my teacher at the time she called me she interrupted my test and she said Sarah could you please follow me so we went to another room and uh, she told me it's pretty obvious that you have a problem it's pretty obvious that you are not doing well uh, are you sure that you want to live your life like this are you sure that you will you will not be miserable you really want to base all your life on avoiding food and i said no i don't have any problem you know you try to save yourself in that try to say no, 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 you are wrong, you are not right, I don't want to lose control in that moment. And then as she said, if you are not going to ask for help to your parents or someone, I will be the one that will do this and if you are going to keep doing what are you doing, we probably cannot come to school anymore. Um, So I remember when school just was over that day, I, I said, okay, I need to do something if I want to change my life, it, if I don't want just to survive and live so miserable. And I, I text my dad and my mom and I ask for help. I can do this. Sorry, uh, I I am still emotional about this because I think when you said something happened to you, for sure something happened to me. But I think there are two steps in the recovering process. One is to allow yourself to accept and to say, okay, you are right. I have a problem, and to admit that you have a problem. And the second step is to have the courage to ask for help. That in, in your mind at the time is so difficult because it's like, okay, now I'm losing. I need to ask for help and I will not have control of the situation anymore. But it's not like this. After you ask for help, uh, yeah. what happened? Okay, after I asked for help, uh, my parents, they... Um, they search for a center specialized in in, in um, a clinic. A yeah, yeah, a private, private uh, um, hospital. Let's call it like this, where they were specialized in helping people suffering from eating disorders. Fifteen years ago was really different. I remember that they wait me, and then I was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa, and a doctor came to me and he said to me, okay, uh, you need to gain weight 
And starting from tomorrow, you need to eat some bread. And I was kind of in shock. I said, bread? I just hated that approach. It's like saying to someone that is suffering from depression, hey, you know, from tomorrow on, you need to be happy. It doesn't work like this. It's not everything about food. Food is a consequence. Food is what comes next. But you need to heal a lot of other, you know, eating disorders. Uh, they need to be studied from different perspectives, from different angles. You need to allow yourself to uh, heal step by step. Eating disorders are complex mental health conditions that often require the intervention of medical from one side and psychological other side experts to start healing, to see what, what was going on. That approach um, didn't help me. My metabolism was so, so slow. I had a metabolism of a dinosaur, of an elephant probably. So every time I eat even a carrot or an apple or something more, I, I, I gain weight. What were you eating uh, at that point uh, before you, you got into this uh, private clinic uh, in this hospital? So I, I don't want to share too many details about this because I know that this could be taken as, a, as an example for other people suffering from eating disorders. A kind of I, trigger for yeah, who, exactly. who, yeah. who is suffering uh, about this. It, it's hard to say, but I remember that I was reading a lot of interviews or watching some videos. Um, at the time we didn't follow we, we didn't have social media and we didn't use social media as we use today but I remember that I was reading everything because I was I would like to do the same so I said if this is working with her this could work for me I could tell you that I was eating almost nothing almost nothing adding uh, any kind of food was uh, really really difficult it didn't go well because instead of gaining weight you know in time step by step i gained weight but i wasn't uh, healing myself so the problem remained this the voice remained i always call this kind of disease the monkey the shadow because it's something it's something that it's it's there so when you are more vulnerable when you are more um weak the voice is is louder 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 so I fell into bulimia for different several years and after my degree at university I felt this void inside me and it was a second wave. Yeah, a second wave of anorexia. So if you could go back in time and change something about uh, those times uh, in the hospital, in the private clinic, mm -hmm. uh, what would you try to change? Yeah, um, unfortunately, I cannot go back in time. But what what we can do is try to support organizations or hospitals, uh, people that are studying this disease, this illness in a different way. If I could change something, I would say I would prefer a less violent, aggressive approach when I enter in the hospital. Uh, as I said before, everything was just focused on food and, and, and gaining weight. That is something that a person that is suffering from eating disorders is, is the most afraid about it. So it was more a medical part, uh, a physical part and not a mental... Exactly. Exactly. It was not mental. And there was also the mental part. I had a lot of trouble with uh, the psychological treatment because some doctors they kept asking me the same question they wanted me to say something that wasn't wasn't true they kept asking me um, do you have like episode of violence in your family um, something happened to you bad do you have a boyfriend I kept saying no no everything is fine you know it's something that I don't know where where it started I know that I wanted to be skinnier but it's like they wanted to hear me saying something that wasn't true and I hate that nowadays luckily there are there are 
there is a completely different knowledge about the illness and a completely different approach, approach to, to that. Let's get uh, to now. Okay. You leave everything in wonder. This is a project that we have started in 2017 together. How did uh, this uh, project uh, change you? If it changed you and, uh, and your life, uh, can you tell us something about this? Sure. I believe that we, we find comfort in our suffering. Like when we hate a job or we don't like something or we don't like a relationship, we stay there because we are in our comfort zone. So when I decided to gather with you to Lewin, to leave everything in wonder, it was and it is still nowadays my revenge. I want to live the life I didn't live and one of the reasons was to step out my comfort zone for the second time but this time in a very healthy way. To live that time that I refused to live years ago when I talk about this blackout I have. Sometimes I, it seems to me that I skipped most of my, my years, most of my life. You, you, know? you, lo you lost them. Uh. You, yeah, you lost time, you lost... Uh... I, I starved myself for years undressing and knowing the consequences because I was afraid to change. But I believe that you need to change. You have to step outside your comfort zone, made of very restrictive rules and control. I've learned that there is no rule book for life. We need to let, let life surprise us. And then Liu Li Barthin and Wonder was was the complete chaos, was, okay, let's jump into something, into the unknown. Luckily, I have you, you know, because something for sure... Something crazy. Something crazy and love. And I always wanted to share this with you, because You Live Everything and Wonder is a project that so much helped me in healing and in caring about myself. Spending time on the road, I just forgot about my my problems i we were so focused to leave to um, find solutions to solve problems. solve problems that we we didn't have time to think about okay how i look today i'm a skin enough i am good enough i'm you know enough i'm enough this is the 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 key word if you are good enough and i discover uh, with, with you and with this project leave everything in wonder that I'm enough and I'm proud of what I am today. There were times uh, during uh, leave everything in wonder where uh, we, we were not uh, thinking about uh, how we were dressing, uh, yes. how, we, how we looked and um, we got many 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 comments uh, about uh, how we were dressing, uh, how uh, our bodies uh, were on the camera, on the thumbnails uh, and uh, I remember that uh, uh, being uh, really strong on us uh, and uh, I know for sure for you but even for me not being able to to explain and to say to people how how those comments were affecting uh, in a bad way, in a strong and a bad way, what uh, us uh, and you, can you tell me what, what you were feeling and uh, yeah, right. what, what those comments uh, were for you? We both, we were used to judgment. We were used to work in a field where you are constantly judged. I, I couldn't destroy myself. So I think that this experience, this, uh, my path made me stronger. I am still vulnerable, I'm still insecure um, in a lot of ways, but I know that I can do it. I know that I'm stronger than some comments. In the beginning, especially when, we're, when some comments were talking or were trying to point at my body and my body shape, I have curves, I have a curvy body and I'm... some people said 
you know, why you're wearing bikini, why in the thumbnails you are always uh, wearing bikini. As a lot of other people, during summertime and when you are uh, living in summertime, when it's hot outside or you are on the beach, you are on the pool, you are on your bikini. And after a while, I just started we started not to care anymore about this, those comments. Why I, I cannot wear a bikini because I have uh, you know, a curvy body? I'm proud of what I am today. I'm proud of my body. I'm, I'm feeling every day more comfortable, more confident. I, I gain confidence. This is, was something that I didn't have a few years ago, you know, because I was ashamed. I said, oh my God, what? would other people think about me and now I'm stronger than that but I know that cyberbullying I know that this those kind of negative comments uh, could affect people like me when I was young that they said me you are a whale you look like an elephant you are fat you are obese you are whatever these kind of comments can affect people in a very bad way live everything in wonder taught me, teaches me every day that we are free. So I am free to wear whatever I like. Luca is free to wear whatever he likes that, that day and nobody can say anything against it. I remember in those times uh, that uh, those comments, uh, they trigger on us, on me, mm -hmm. um, a kind of um, search to see on uh, other videos, other YouTubers, other thumbnails, uh, a comparison uh, and I start to compare what we were showing in our videos, uh, in our pictures uh, and uh, other YouTubers were and uh, I saw that it was the same things, the only things that were changing were, were the shapes of the bodies and that was for me something really uh, sad and dangerous because if you start yeah. saying to someone okay though that body is okay you can do it because that body is different and exactly. your body is not okay because your shapes uh, are vulgar are uh, sexual uh, sexy. or sexy if uh, the shape of the body can change and can affect so much the, the perspective, the comments and the people who are watching that is dangerous because yeah. it means that uh, you are putting inside the mind of those people that are uh, that can be vulnerable they can trigger something really dangerous in their minds so what I would like to ask if if you see some uh, cyberbullying doing that, uh, please try to support uh, the, the, the victim, the, the person that is getting all the, those bad comments uh, because uh, it, it can be triggering something uh, bad uh, in, in, in those people. A, a normal body, the word normal doesn't exist in body shapes. We are all different different and this is the best part of it so yeah for sure what you said is really important recently yeah you have been uh, sharing a lot of cooking a lot of recipes uh, on our YouTube channel I know also that you have been working hard uh, mm -hmm. on a uh, um, cookbook so I would like to know isn't it uh, that weird uh, after what you have been through to be doing that now? No, the answer is no. It's not weird. Uh, I like food. Most anorexics love food. When I was in one of the darkest moments of anorexia, I couldn't understand why does everything revolve around food? Why every person is talking about food? If you have a meeting with someone, they will say, okay, let's meet for dinner, let's meet uh, for lunch we will talk about this at breakfast and say why it's so important the food is the center of a lot of relationships and communication so I try to eliminate food but I in the end food was always the 
the main focus even when I was anorexic because I need, I need to think about avoiding food. So I don't want to think about food but I was thinking always about food. Cooking is an expression of caring and love. I want to show, I want to demonstrate to everybody that an ex-anorexic can write a, book, a cookbook, can cook, can still have a good relationship with the food, a really chaotic relationship, but it's not something that, okay, you are anorexic, you will not see food in your entire life anymore. No, it's possible, and I can wait to share the cookbook with uh, every one of you. So, what is uh, the message uh, you want to um, share with people through this interview? And uh, we, we now see that uh, you, you could connect uh, everything. The so dots. Your, the dots, your past uh, with uh, your present uh, and your future, also with this, this cookbook. Uh, we can see that uh, you can overcome uh, this uh, illness, uh, you can uh, kind of heal. And uh, there is uh, a positive and bright side uh, you can survive and you can overcome uh, everything uh, in your life. I already feel so much better. You know that I've been thinking about this video for months, for years, and I always was blocked, I was stuck, and I couldn't find the, the motivations to, to do so, the, the courage to to share this story with you. My message is that we all need help sometimes. There is nothing wrong. Some days can be worse than others. And for everyone that is watching this video, that is struggling, recovery is possible. I want to say that you are strong. I want to say that you mean so much to this world and that you are enough. Weight is just a number, it doesn't define who you are as a person. Every time you fight, the voice, the monkey, the shadow, call it whatever you like, it gets weaker, 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 and then at the end you barely will hear it. So, um, it, I'm still in, in that process where I cannot say that I love myself totally. If you cannot love yourself, because it's really difficult, Please try to accept yourself and respect yourself because this is so so important and I just want to end this video saying that you are not alone that is really difficult to to acknowledge that you need help but please accept help because there are a lot of people that are willing to help you that care about you and that love you so remember that you are not alone and I just want to say thank you to everybody for giving me the possibility to share this story that was inside me forever and um, now you know, you know a very important part of my life and I think that I am the person who I am today because I also went through uh, that fight, that battle and I am a survivor because I, I won that battle I'm still struggling some days, I cannot say, you know, it's always everything peaches and, and cream. It's okay not to be okay, it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to share your story if you feel to share your story, because nobody is forced to share their story. And I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> I told you at the beginning and I will tell you again now. I'm proud of you, thank you're you. strong, you're a survivor and uh, thank you for what you just did, thank you for sharing your story and uh, we will see you in the next one. And remember. And remember, <laughs> la vita è bella. Life is beautiful. Ciao. Ciao. Again, making my way through crowded thoughts. Sometimes it's hard to get out of it. Broken.
broke my heart in the dark I was just trying to feel something Falling asleep to the sound of it Always used to let you clean up the mess Just down on my knees Thought I couldn't stand up on my own Turns out sometimes you're stronger alone Bringing out the fight, yeah, bring on all the lightning Cause I'm looking for a hero Look inside the mirror I find one, oh Carry the hurt when it gets too hard Pick it up, dust it off When I fall down 11, I get up 12 Don't need nobody else Yeah, I can save myself Got burned, but I learned Our scars make us who we are Now I'm ten feet tall over my demons Remind me no one's got me like myself yeah, I love me without any help I'm the best thing to believe in So I'm bringing out the fight, yeah Bring on all the lightning Cause I'm looking for a hero Look inside the mirror I find one, oh Carry the hurt when it gets too hard Pick it up, dust it off When I fall down a But I got a million reasons why I won't Cause this heavy is a season And the sun is always right behind the storm